It's easy to imagine us millionaires and billionaires as Scrooge McDuck, diving into our Olympic-sized pools full of gold coins, lounging on couches made from bags of money, eating our dinners on tables made of solid gold bars. I mean, after all, where else are we supposed to keep our riches? At the bank? No, no, no. I've seen It's a Wonderful Life, and there's no way I'd trust a bank with millions of dollars. So, where exactly do the super wealthy keep their money? Do they store it in their mattress like my grandmom did? back in her heyday? Do they invest it in fancy cars, properties, and startup businesses? Well, today we're going to take a look at where the billionaires of the world actually keep their money. We'll glance at the portfolios of some of the richest people on Earth, and I might even give you a little lesson on where I keep my money as well. First, let's chat about the most obvious place that people keep their wealth, banks. I know, I know, I just made a little comment about not trusting them, but banks do come in handy for quite often, especially Especially when you're super rich. The billionaires of the world don't stroll down to Wells Fargo and wait for a teller. When they deal with banks, they deal with them through a private wealth division. The private wealth division is made specifically to deal with high net worth clients, also known as HNW clients. These private wealth divisions have wealth managers that are specifically trained on handling accounts with a lot of zeros, commas, and investments. Often, high net worth clients have their own specific banker who manages their portfolio and assists them with their everyday needs. The customer service is unmatched. I mean, is there much better than looking over your fortune while sipping a glass of champagne your wealth manager has just given to you? It's hard to top that kind of customer service experience. Additionally, high net worth clients get a few more wonderful benefits. Even though they have the money, they often don't have to pay for wire transfer fees, cashier checks, or safety deposit boxes. To be honest, I kind of forgot that you even had and to pay for cashier checks. But even with this special treatment, high net worth clients rarely have that much in the bank. In fact, a recent study found that the average billionaire has approximately 1% of their net worth in liquid assets. Yes, that means it's perfectly realistic to think that Jeff Bezos might only see a few thousand dollars when he pops his debit into the ATM. Billionaires have little in liquid assets, primarily because diversifying their wealth is incredibly important. There is no problem that any one company or investment will succeed, which means that placing all your money into one business is incredibly risky. If Jeff Bezos took all his money and invested it into a company that turns peach pits into harmonicas, and shockingly that business failed, well, old Jeff would be out of luck. Instead, billionaires spread their wealth across dozens and dozens of investments. Jeff Bezos, for example, has an entire website that details his investment portfolio, and it is, quite frankly, all over the place. And I thought I had some diverse investments. Jeff takes that to the next level. He has a 3% stake in Business Insider. He has millions invested in Unity Biotechnology, a company that researches and develops pharmaceuticals to help prevent and alleviate age-related diseases. He's also invested in a much less serious business, Glass Baby, a company that creates glass votives for candles. Then there are his investments in Airbnb, which totals $112 million. And his investment in Uber, which is approximately $37 million. Of course, there are even bigger investments, like the Washington Post, which he bought for a quarter of a billion dollars. But Jeff Bezos isn't the only billionaire on everyone's radar. Even though he is one of the most fun to talk about, there is his runner-up, Bill Gates. Bill Gates' investments are all through he and his wife's foundation, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. By far the most head-turning investment in their portfolio portfolio is 50 million shares of Berkshire Hathaway, which is valued at $11 billion. One might assume the second largest holding would be something glamorous or business savvy, maybe a tech company or a Forbes 500 company. But when it comes to Bill Gates, it's anything but glamorous. His second largest holding is Waste Management Incorporated. That's right, those green trucks you see driving around actually make the big bucks. The foundation has 18.6 million shares in Waste Management Incorporated, which has a market value of $2.1 billion. Then there's the Canadian Railway Company, which may seem like an investment of the past. After all, the Vanderbilts made their money on the railroads back when cowboys were still roping out west. However, the Canadian Railway Company is a vital business for transporting goods and industrial supplies even today. The shares the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation owns have a market value of $1.54 billion. 
Plus. The foundation is also invested in Caterpillar Incorporated, a company that manufactures heavy equipment, and in Walmart. It's hard to lose on Walmart, I suppose. So, millionaires and billionaires diversify, from Walmart to Berkshire Hathaway, even to candle votives. For millionaires, business is often their third most valuable asset, directly after primary residences and retirement accounts. But for those with a net worth of over 20 billion, business tends to be their most valuable asset. That being said, billionaires still invest an incredible amount into property. And while the housing market is known to, well, you know, crash every once in a while, it's still a fairly sound place for the wealthy to invest and park their cash. Mark Zuckerberg has invested his Facebook money in some sweet digs across the United States. He owns a $100 million property in Hawaii, which he probably retires in after he finishes his day of surfing with certainly no sunburn. On the upside, it's safe to say Mr. Zuckerberg is keeping melanoma at bay. He also owns a $59 million property in Lake Tahoe and several million dollar properties in Silicon Valley. All in all, he has about 10 properties worth millions of dollars in his portfolio, which I commend him for. I'm a huge fan of real estate, which is why I've invested the majority of my money into properties around the globe. A villa in Italy, a penthouse in New York, a castle in southern France. It's good to know if I ever need the money. I can toss one of the homes on the market and be back in the green within weeks. Since Jeff Bezos is the wealthiest man on earth, it's no surprise that he is one of the United States' largest land owners. As of 2017, he was the 27th largest land owner, even surpassing logging companies and prolific ranch families. And just three years later, in 2020, he was the 25th largest land owner in the world. Clearly, Jeff likes scooping up his many properties as he can. He's dropped $80 million on three apartments in New York, a $53 million property in Medina, Washington, $23 million on a home in D.C., and an undisclosed amount on a 165,000-acre ranch in Texas. In addition, he shattered records by purchasing the most expensive home ever sold in Los Angeles, a $165 million property called Warner Estate. But that's not the only property he owns in the City of Angels. He's purchased over $114 million worth of undeveloped land in Beverly Hills, which he is sure to turn a profit on. Aside from stocks, business, and real estate, there are dozens of other places that billionaires like to keep their money. Ray Dalio, the owner of the largest hedge fund in the world, strongly believes that 5-10% to of your wealth should be invested in gold. Maybe some of us like to have a Scrooge McDuck swim after all. So, there you have it, where the super rich keep all that money. What would you do if you were worth a few billion dollars? What would you invest in? Let me know in the comments down below. You know I love a good chat about portfolios. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Oh, and turn on post notifications. As always, I'm Mr. Luxury. Now, if you don't mind me, I'm gonna go have a drink with my private wealth manager. Pip-pip to doodly-doo.